Hello and welcome to The Wealth Within Us. Today, I am here with Amanda Grace and she is a naturopath and we're all about health and we're all about balancing minerals because there's so much being thrown into our system that we're taking into our bodies that we need to be balancing these minerals in order to maintain our health and therefore we can truly be wealthy in our health. So Amanda, I would love for you to introduce yourself. Well, thanks, Michelle. You know, I like the title of your podcast. I oh, think the, um, the wealth and health, it sure goes together because without our health, we, we can't pursue any type of wealth, whether it's emotional or financial or, you know, even bit making friendships and things. So we're about improving your energy, improving your life. When you feel good, you you have more to share with others in terms of um, knowledge and um, just positive energy, um, spirituality. Yeah, and all I think of that. when we're when we're nourished and healthy on the inside, it just naturally comes out on the outside. No matter what you're doing in your health, your wealth, your relationships, with everything. But I think it starts on the inside first. Now you're a natural yeah. path, so you probably look at all systems of the body. Yes. Well, that's kind of the nature of naturopathy is looking at the whole person together, which I love. Um, I was talking to the wife of one of my clients yesterday or the day before. And she says, well, he's got his um, oncologist and he's got his urologist and he's got, I'm like, each one of those doctors has their own specialty. They're looking at a microcosm of the body they're prescribing their own special medications, yet they don't see how they're interacting in the body. And they have no concept of getting to the root cause of what's going on. Yeah. And how much and, are they even talking uh, to one another? Probably not at all. Mm. I mean, they look at the records and that's about it. If they even delve that deep, you know, to see what are the interactions. Sometimes it's up to the spouse, you uh -huh. know? someone advocating for you or someone else right so that's where you know I told her she's all about holistic she wants to go all natural but he's not quite there yet um he's actually uh <laughs> well I have to do and I heard this from someone else yesterday hmm. I have to do what the doctor says or they will number one stop my insurance the insurance company will stop paying if I don't for the doctor's orders. Or secondly, wow. they will take me off disability if oh. I don't follow the doctor's orders. So it puts some, it puts people in a tough situation sometimes. Yeah. So I I'm say, so well, trapped. what can we do alongside that? Then we're looking at complementary medicine, mm -hmm. right? Um, and because my specialty is getting to the root cause of diseases, you know, why do you have cancer? Why do you have candida? Why? And, it, and it's funny that issues? you even say that that's a specialty because shouldn't that be everyone's goal yeah. in the medical field? It sounds so ironic that you say, my specialty is finding the root cause of disease. So it's like, well, everybody else, you're just kind of treating symptoms, which I agree mm -hmm. with. Yes, it's exactly true. I mean, and most medical doctors, if they're honest, will say, hey, you know, we understand that this medication is not going to cure anything. Mm. This isn't going to heal anything. It's up to your body to do the healing. And anything that we can do to take um, obstructions out of the way, let's okay. say you have a toxic uh, exposure that you may have had in the past or that you're still being exposed to. So, you know, the word doctor actually means teacher. Oh, so I, did I not consider know myself. Yeah. So I consider myself an educator as much as anything. Um, and I'm about educating people on um, improving their lifestyle. What, what are you eating? What are you drinking? What are you breathing? What are you putting on your skin? Mm. What are you bathing in? You know, what are you um, exposed to as far as electromagnetic fields? Yeah. There's so much of that, that we can make better choices about if we're educated. Most yes. people have yes. no clue because the, the information is not out there in the mainstream. No. And it seems like it's getting harder and harder to access as well. Yeah. The fact checkers are, are hiding the facts. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. Because for me, my goal with my health is to be preventative and not reactive so that I can prevent anything from potentially happening. I mean, obviously I'm not talking about accidents or things like that. Those are sort of on their own, yeah. but I'm talking about within my body, what I can control. <clears throat> I'm trying to be preventative and I'm taking preventative measures and I have been for a long time. So I'm really yeah. interested to know, especially with minerals. I think minerals are one of the least understood aspects of our body. And you specifically are going to talk today about copper and how that plays a yeah. role in our body. There's this giant mineral chart and it's about interactions between, you may have seen it, uh, you know, copper is affected by iron, it's affected mm -hmm. by zinc, it's affected by silver. And so it's always a balancing act in our body. Um, let me just talk briefly about some of the testing that I do. Okay. Blood tests aren't necessarily the best way to check your mineral hmm. um, availability, shall we say. Okay. Um, for instance, a lot of people will come up as anemic. And the idea of anemia is that you don't have enough iron. Okay. But that's not really the whole picture. It's just that you don't have enough iron in your blood. And your iron is supposed to be bound, you know, your hemoglobin is what carries oxygen in your body. So iron in your blood is really important, but we are, nobody is really truly deficient in iron. Hmm. It's very, very rare, unless you have some kind of a genetic condition, perhaps. Yeah. Because um, back in the, probably the forties, they started adding iron to our food. And it's in the form of iron shavings, you know, it's metal that they put in our food. Um, and you'll find that if you look at the labels on anything that's um, wheat based and it says enriched or um, ferric oxide. Okay. Ferrous, yeah. I've seen that, you know, uh-huh. And mostly it'll say enriched, but you'll find it on bread cereal, pasta, all, especially all those wheat-based products. Okay. Um, and so if it's so enriched, then it's not naturally being correct. ingested into your body. Right. But it is being absorbed by your body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. Um, so we really only have a need for like one milligram of iron per day because we have this fantastic recirculating system for iron, which... Um, but there's a key to that. And it's like a little skeleton key to unlock that iron. Your body will um, uh, take that excess iron and it'll stick it away in the tissues somewhere. Might stick it in the fat, might stick it in your liver. It might stick it in your brain because it, it can't handle all of that excessive amount. <clears throat> so it's almost like we're over ingesting iron. I don't know if ingesting is, I, I don't even want to say yes. consuming, but somehow we're overfilled yes. with iron without our knowledge. And then the test results from a blood test perspective are saying, no, you're iron deficient when we're really not. You know, it was interesting when I was pregnant with my kids, I remember them putting me on some kind of iron pill or something. And I mean, I just threw that thing up. I stopped taking it because I was like, this is not whatever this is. My body, your body was, it. your body was being smart and it was rejecting it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So besides that added iron that's put in food, um, if you're coming up anemic, a doctor's going to say, oh, we got to give you an iron infusion. Mm -hmm. You got to take this iron. You got to take prenatals, prenatals, almost all prenatals have iron mm -hmm. and they're not just one milligram. It's like three, four, six milligrams. When you're I'm saying iron. we only need one milligram a day. One per day. And here's the way it starts because even our parents could have had that excess iron. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're premature, if you're born premature, you don't get a copper download. Uh, it so my kids, like I don't know last... if you know this, but my kids were three months, my, my twins were three months early. So they there were we almost go. exactly three months early. And I was premature also and okay. bottle fed. So if they, if they were premature and they had formula, 
guess what? So that my kids to the didn't formula. have formula. They were, they did have. <clears throat> there you go. That's good. But they're going to need it more liquid iron. gold in the preemie unit. They called that liquid gold. The breast milk. Yes. They called that liquid gold for the preemie. That's baby. great. That's good. I mean, I, back in the sixties, when I was born, you know, they weren't so keen on breastfeeding. Yeah, neither. I was born in 72 and my mom, I, I think they fed into them <laughs> that this formula was better than breast milk. It was un, very untrendy to, to breast. <laughs> yes. Just so and, strange. And still that's, what today, body, that's what a woman's body is meant to do. That's right. And still today they're saying to us, oh, we know better than you. We know better than your body. We know better than yeah, God, no. whatever. They think they're gods sometimes. So <laughs> this... <laughs> This is a headset I use for clients. You put it over the back of the head and it goes okay. on this bone in front of the ears. Okay. And it plugs into totally. a computer program. And that actually, this is, uh, it's called a bone conducting headset. Okay. And it doesn't, oh, it's I not feel like head, there's no opening for your earphones. Okay. But it, it sends frequencies to your body and it gives me a, a reading of mm -hmm. what's going on. And so it can test your nutrients, you know, um, mm -hmm. food allergies, but I look at it primarily for um, vitamins and minerals. Now minerals, like I said, there's a balancing act with minerals and they are so important. I mean, this is what forms our um, enzymes in our body, enzymes that digest your food, enzymes that give you energy okay. and they form our hormones. And think mm -hmm. about how important all our hormones are, not just our sex hormones, but, you yep. know, your thyroid. Um, well, and think about how many disruptors there are, plastics mm -hmm. being one, um, mm -hmm. that are out there messing with our hormones at the same time. Yes. Um, so copper is the key. Copper is the skeleton key mm -hmm. that I mentioned. And it has... Um, what did I say? It has literally, there are thousands of enzyme reactions in the body related to copper. Okay. So if you're premature and you've been fed formula, those are like the two big strikes against you. And then you come along and you, you get prescribed iron supplements or iron infusions, and you just get more and more toxic and more and more anemic. Because so iron in the body is too much iron in the body. Does it become then a toxin like other things yes. do too much of it? It absolutely does. Becomes a it toxin. absolutely not only becomes a toxin, but it drives the copper down even further oh. because they're antagonists. Okay. Iron, iron and copper are antagonists, zinc and copper and silver and copper are antagonists. Okay. So you don't want to use silver, colloidal silver every day. That's not like a good, I mean, everybody says, oh, that's natural, but it does affect, you know, your minerals. And then of course with COVID, everybody's prescribing, recommending zinc and you have to watch your zinc and copper ratio. So if you're just taking hmm. zinc willy nilly and you're not working with the, with the copper, um, then you're going to get copper, more copper deficient. Um, so for instance, um, it's estimated that it should be like a four to one ratio zinc to copper. So if you're okay. taking 16 milligrams of zinc, you need four milligrams of copper okay. just to stay in balance. To, to replenish what it's taking. Yes. What it's okay. causing. Yeah. It's imbalancing. So now the iron um, toxicity, you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. I think this is really at the root. What do we talk? What do we take that is really good for us, like vitamin C and vitamin E. Those are called antioxidants. Oxidants. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you leave an iron skillet out in the rain? It rusts. Mm -hmm. It oxidizes. Yeah, it turns a different color. Yes. So what do you think happens to that iron when it's in the body? You got yeah. oxygen exposure. You've got water. It's becoming, it's rusting in our bodies. Okay. And it's causing inflammation. It's causing oxidation. <clears throat> there are certain people that like to say, oh, inflammation is the root cause of disease. I said, no, no. Inflammation is your body's response to something else. Yeah. 
May, maybe it's causing? more like inflammation is the biggest symptom of something wrong. In yes. your body. You've got yes. inflammation, which is the symptom, not the cause, because inflammation doesn't just happen on its own. Inflammation is right. always triggered by something else. And inflammation can be a good thing. I mean, mm. to a certain extent, when we have an injury, that inflammation is the body's response to an acute um, acute reaction, acute injury. Um, now that needs to be moderated so that you don't have blood loss, a blood, um, we have too much swelling in, uh, in your limb or something. It'll cut off the blood supply. Okay. But that's neither here nor there, but you, like you said, um, inflammation is the body's response. Um, so I, that's why antioxidants, we're always looking for that. And antioxidants are great. We need them because what are we getting? We're getting oxidation also from pollution and yeah. other toxicities that we're taking in. Yeah. The, EMF but the iron is something, the, the iron is something to a, a large extent we can control. Okay. So That's good first news. of all, yes, it is good news. <laughs> so first of all, by decreasing our consumption of iron, never take iron supplements. In fact, you know, uh, multivitamins, a lot of people like it. Well, this is a clean one. This is a good one. Yeah. But is, does it have the exact ultimate ratio of all your minerals? And if that amount of copper that's in there, if you're already deficient, then taking a, um, what I want to say, a, just a basic amount of copper to get you through your day, mm -hmm. that's not going to help with that deficiency. So increasing the copper especially with food, but honestly, I think um, our soils are depleted of copper yeah. to a good extent. And so even like beef liver, they, they used to do studies, um, scientific research and all with, with grass-fed beef liver because they would see, okay, if you've got anemia, give, like, give them beef liver. In the olden days, that's what they did, right? And they assumed that it was the iron in the liver. Okay. Correcting things, right? We're giving her iron. So it's bringing up her blood, but they're also very high or they at least used to be grass fed beef was high. Liver was high in copper. So it was like the okay. perfect ratio. So it's almost like you're going to eat this liver as your source of copper, but people attributed it to the grass fed beef, beef when it was really the copper in the liver that was helping your body. Right. That now it does sense. have iron. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think, um, I think people are underestimating how much copper is required. Mm. Um, as, as I spoke earlier, I think the USRDA says like 0.9 milligrams. Okay. Um, and uh, yet they did a study. I wanted to, so if you said it was 0.9, but then the iron was one, then that's already off right there from what well, you I don't know before. Uh, I don't know what the, um, no, that's, that was zinc and copper. I mentioned. Oh, that was okay. You're right. I'm confused. I, I got too many minerals in my head. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to magnesium field. and we haven't even gotten to the magnesium and calcium imbalance. <laughs> I know I'm going to just um, like fall over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what the U S RDA is on iron. That would be, that would be interesting. Maybe I can look that up. But, so 2.6 is what, um, these studies have shown is the minimal amount of copper you need. So even though the government numbers is like 0.9. Okay. Um, the studies, this was a, a ch Chambers was the study. Um, and this was 2000, Rock et al, 2000. You can, if you want to look up the study. Okay. Um, they have, they covered the effects of copper deficiency and excess. Oh, and th the study came to the conclusion that to prevent copper deficiency, you need a minimum of 2.6 milligrams of copper per day. Okay. And that's just the minimal. If you're already, um, yeah, if you're taking something that's now depleting that copper, then you would have to intake it, or at least knowingly, if you're knowingly taking something that depletes that. Yep. And I think that's the problem. We don't always know what's going on inside of our bodies. 
Yes, this is true. Um, so they're saying that the optimal amount of copper is somewhere between four and six okay. milligrams. According to a lot of these studies that I'm reading, and um, so there, there were symptoms of the anemia, you know, like what we normally call um, iron deficient. Um, but this was a rat study, and this was in 1928. So they've oh, wow. known this for a long time. And when you look back at some of these older studies, it makes a lot of sense. And I don't know why yeah. some of the modern doctors aren't putting it Truthfully, together. Truthfully, I'm putting more of my faith in the studies done in the late 1800s and early 1900s nowadays than most things that are out now. And right. I, and I, it's like, are is there propaganda involved? Like, I don't know, but a lot of them don't make sense. And I, like you have, if I want good information, I typically tend to go back in history than the more recent history. Well, the training I did last year with Morley Robbins, um, he's got a magnesium group on Facebook and his website is therootcauseprotocol.com. Okay. I highly recommend. In fact, it, my, all of my clients go there. I say the go root, to that website. Therootcauseprotocol.com. Yes. Go to that website and download. He's got a free handbook. He's mm. written a book called um, Cure Your Fatigue. The CU in Cure is Copper. Okay. And so I took a four-month course with him last year. Um, and he gets into the real deep science of this stuff. I'm trying to make it little simplified for everybody because it can get very complicated. Um, but looking at the imbalances, particularly between copper and iron and zinc and silver and some other things. Um, also uh, magnesium and calcium, mm -hmm. which I'll get to in a minute. But um, so this copper and iron, copper and iron supplements were, can, were used to um, correct anemia in malnourished infants. And then um, even with these, it was a rat study also, these pregnant rats, if they were kept on a low copper diet, their offspring had behavioral problems due to a copper deficiency in the brain. Oh. So when you think about all of the stuff that's going on today, um, there's a lot of, um, suggestions that that iron toxicity when it's stuck in the tissues is what's leading to um dna replication problems okay you know what i mean yes disease basically mm -hmm. in whatever organ is um yeah, where it's and stuck. i think i think that's where the genes play into it you know oh my my, my dad had heart disease and my granddad had heart disease whatever that's the weak area of your body. And that iron toxicity and copper deficiency in particular were probably passed down to you. And you all ate the same thing growing up. Right? Yeah, that's true. And it almost sounds like if you knew whether you were bottle or breastfed, if you were a premium or not, you probably know that. So I'm sure there's other factors that then play into it that can help give you a more accurate sort of protocol maybe on how to mm -hmm. balance yeah well first step is avoiding enriched foods okay um of course avoiding processed foods in general is a great idea but if you're going to be taking in some processed foods you're going to eat some bread other than mm -hmm. homemade or um crackers or whatever look at those labels you know yeah. things come into my house from other sources sometimes i'm like oh, who brought this in here it says <laughs> it's got enriched enriched flour um but so usually when you're buying you're... flour don't buy enriched flour to bake oh absolutely it's not. not necessary no but uh so the copper you can get a good bit of it from red wine chocolate oh, I, I cocoa, like that oh and i like chocolate leg... See, I, yeah. i'm on it <laughs> legumes brazil nuts seaweed okay um some some shellfish which i think i don't really like those but well, I do. Um, I like this. <laughs> um, liver and organ meats. But I say, okay. you know, focus on the grass fed, especially the beef. 
Um, the beef liver has a lot more copper than um, the chicken liver. Okay. Well, and I've heard so many people so, reversing disease with the carnivore diet. Now I've personally never done that, but from what you're telling me, it seems like that could be playing a role in why that works for some people. That's a possibility. I, I'm not that familiar with the carnivore no, diet. No, I mean, no. I know keto, but um, I I would assume, you know, so the positive things theoretically would be you're avoiding sugar mm, and yeah. sugar is going to deplete copper also. Okay. So um, as well as copper. As well as that sugar, as well as the iron are both pro-oxidants in the body. You know, they're causing that oxidation. Um you're going to get nutrient dense food if you're eating meat, as long as it's clean and organic. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I love fruits and vegetables and they're great, a great part of a balanced diet. Um, <laughs> but our soils are so depleted yeah. in this day and age too. You almost cannot get enough of what you need without some kind of supplementation. And I think even with meat sources, even if they're grass fed, sometimes those animals aren't tracked from the pasture to the grocery store shelf, so to say. We so sometimes we track. don't know what happens in that process as well. Yeah. Well, you want to get grass finished. I mean, it has to be. Okay. They, they do make, they make that labeling grass fed, grass finished. Okay. So, um, Thousand Hills is actually a really good company mm. from what I've seen. And you can order online. Um, my One of my local grocery stores carries their products. They have um, a ground beef called a Renegade blend. Oh. And it's ground beef. And then it's got, I think it's maybe 5% heart and liver that are ground in with it. And so you okay. can't really tell, but you're yeah. getting that extra nutrition there. And you're supporting a local farmer. You're supporting, you know, good practice, local farms. Yes. So what so, else can we do to balance our <laughs> copper? Yeah. Well, you can eat those foods that I mentioned. Um, stay away from that excess iron, obviously. Um, yeah, no, that seems like a real big one. It is. It is a huge one. Because just like with toxicity, I mean, we all need to detox. But you got to stop the toxins from coming in first as much as possible. Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, eating the endocrine disruptors and in your food by putting the plastics on them and, um, you know, tap water, you're getting chlorine and fluoride. Mm, if it's not um, filtered. Yeah. If you're not stopping those things, then why are you even bothering to detox? You've got to halt at least as much as you can control. I mean, we can't control everything and no. we don't want to go crazy trying. Yeah. Or set, <laughs> or set ourselves up for failure. Yeah. Or yeah, set ourselves stress. up for failure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Cause I, cause I find that a lot of times you come up with, like <clears throat> you have a plan and sometimes that plan is so drastic from where you're at right now that it almost sets yourself up for failure and you're like, forget it. I'm not doing this. So it's almost like take it a little bit at a time. So like you said, maybe cut down a little bit on the enriched foods if that's healthy or if that's heavy in your diet. It's not, it's not that hard to in, avoid the enriched foods. Yeah. And I would say that's the one area, that's one area you can control. Yes. All right. Absolutely. You know, it's not even, I wouldn't even, and I mean, I'm telling my clients, <laughs> avoid, not reduce the enriched, enriched foods. That's an easy one. Just read the label. Okay? Yeah. There's always other choices. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you're eating out in a, a family sit setting or something and you can't read a label or control it, okay, you give it up that one time. But yeah, um, when you're buying food or, you know, you can guarantee that everything you're going to get as far as bread in a, a restaurant situation is going to be enriched. Okay. So eating bread out, Unless it's, unless they're telling you it's organic because they don't enrich organic flour. Okay. So if you're eating, so if a bread that you buy is marked organic, it is not enriched. Mm -hmm. That's really yes. good to know. That's an easy Well, you'll way see to it know. on the label. You'll see okay. it'll say organic wheat flour and it won't say okay. enriched. So if it'll, you buy an organic wheat flour, if you're making your own bread, then that's not enriched either. Okay. So to correct. be considered organic, it's not enriched. That's correct. 
Okay. So that's pretty easy. And then, you know, upper, upping the copper based foods, um, you know, and buying organic, um, sustainably grown mm -hmm. foods, um, bioavailable farms. They're a lot of people don't understand, but nourishing the soil is so crucial in order to get food that has yes. nutrients in it. Um, you know, I had a sheep farm and I understand this in a good, it, in fact, I understood the copper and iron um, balance thing even before I met Morley and started researching it because I had a sheep that died of copper deficiency. Oh. And he had a black fleece and all of a sudden the root started growing out gray. Huh. And you know, when we look at our gray roots, yeah, that's a copper deficiency. Really? really? Mm -hmm. That's why when you see people using, uh, taking copper, using the patches to stimulate that copper peptide, mm -hmm. sometimes their hair color is reversing. It's going from gray to uh, brown again or black or whatever. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. that especially, makes sense. especially dark haired people and animals, you know, like black horses, mm -hmm. black sheep, uh, you have dark hair, yeah, you, like... you require more copper actually. Oh, okay. And that, um, even with horses and, and, and sheep and goats and all of that, huh. copper is a big thing. I think they need to make a copper enriched shampoo. <laughs> actually they do. <laughs> do they, they really? They do, Michelle. <laughs> That's There's, so um, smart. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're looking, if you look at some of this, um, Dr. Picard's information. Okay. On the copper peptides. There's, you know, copper peptides are used on the skin. Um, I had a lot of hair loss last year and there's, there's a spray I got okay. for the hair that had copper peptides in it. So oh. yeah, they can be used um, topically as well. Yeah. For and sure. I said enriched, that was probably not the right word. <laughs> so scratch that enriched, uh, maybe copper added shampoo. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I'm going to be on the lookout for that. that I, I also think, and this is like my little rant, I think for shampoo, they need to make not only copper added shampoo, but they need to make shampoo for different water types. I find sometimes when I'm going somewhere, mm. my hair is different depending on the water that I'm washing it in. So interesting. Yes. It's well, a significant yeah, the different sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So interesting. But anyway, <laughs> off that topic. <laughs> All right. So I want to get back to the headphone ish thing that you were talking about and mm -hmm. how you can help people with that. Is it virtual? Does it have to be in your office? And what do people, what, what are we going to learn from, from this? I'm very, very interested in this, in this. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's called the AO scanner. Okay. And it's, um, it's software, the original box equipment was like $40,000. And oh. then yeah, it came down so that more of us practitioners could afford it. That's so if amazing. someone comes in my office, they wear the headset. Okay. And we run, um, I usually run like four reports on them. Mm -hmm. If someone, I can do this over the phone for people as well. Oh, that's amazing. And so you don't even have to be where you're at. So we'll no, put information you... then in our description on how people get in touch with you to have this. Okay. Done. That's great. So if you're on the phone with me and you want to have the scan done, you just, mm -hmm. you put the phone right there on that bone and those frequencies okay. will pass through. You'll hear the sounds. Okay. And so it doesn't just, it does an assessment also sends frequencies okay. to correct the body. And so the first report we do is with the voice. So it's not and, just... Um, so, so I'm sorry to interrupt. So it's not just giving you feedback. It's actually helping to treat. rebalance the body. Rebalance. Okay. Okay. We don't, we don't say treat, but yes, okay. it's helping to rebalance the body. It's sending information to your body. So your body can go, Oh, let me fix that. Let me fix that. Yes. You know? <laughs> and I, for, and I believe if, if for all you other people out there that our world, this world that we're in is created on numerical expression and frequency 
So what you're saying makes complete sense to me. So if you're sending something in, that's like, do blah, 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 then it's going to do it. It understands that language. I know it's not like, right. you know what I mean? It understands that your body understands yes. that no matter That's where right. you are. Like it doesn't, everything has a frequency. Everything has a frequency. And, and there's a lot of remote work. I can do a lot of different things. Most everything I do other than, um, you know, the minerals and mm-hmm. the vitamins and things like that supplements. Um, but even homeopathy is frequency based. Okay. Okay. So the first scan we do is um, the voice analysis. And this is a technology that is used by the FBI, FBI to, you know, analyze your voice. Oh, so, okay. And so voice analysis. So you would analyze my voice. The computer does. Yes. Okay. But it would be I would my take, voice. Yes. I would take a recording mm-hmm. and um, I would, you know, I, if I were doing it, having it done on me, mm-hmm. I would say, this is, I'm Amanda Grace. And I just want to talk for 10 seconds. I can talk about anything I want. I can tell you all my health troubles, or I can talk <laughs> about the sunshine. 10 seconds is all it takes. And then it gives me a bunch of lines and it gives me a re- four reports based on just the voice. And this is looking at the emotions, but wow. it also ties that in with the physical because a lot of what people are suffering with is mm-hmm. based on emotions okay because okay. our our mind uh, yes. controls our body and sometimes it can be traumas from childhood um i'm keeping my box of tissues here because when that report comes <laughs> up and i show people they're like you know i i wow. was attacked when i was a child or um my mother and i didn't get oh my father left you know people have traumas yeah from their childhood and, and I think even traumas that you're not even consciously aware of that you're subconsciously oh, yeah. playing, which is, and, and they wouldn't better. even think, yeah, they wouldn't you're even think healing something me. you didn't even know. Yep. I think but that's then, incredible. Th- what we do with that two things. Okay. First of all, I send them an email with all that report. I, I kind of go over it. I don't spend mm-hmm. a lot of time on the emotion one because it can be kind of private. Yeah, I just, I show people how to read it. And I say, you need to just, you and God pray over this, talk it over. Um, While they're here, they wear colored lenses. And whatever color comes up for them, I put the glasses on them. They wear them for, you know, 15 minutes or so while we talk. So those glasses then will change color within 15 minutes? No. Oh, it, the color is related to the imbalance in their voice, in their emotions. Oh, so you give them the color that comes through on the report. Yeah. Ah, okay. I so got I've it. got all this different colors. This is amazing here. to me. Like this is how healthcare should be. Just- yes. Well, it's non-invasive. Mm-hmm. It's, it really gets, honestly, it gets to the root cause. Yeah, it, it exactly. Is a- you can have a, a, a toxicity and an imbalance in your body just related to emotions. Mm-hmm. So then they, it, along with the report, they get music files. Okay. And there's going to be four music files with an embedded tone to rebalance those four emotional imbalances. Okay. And now is that mm-hmm. something that they need to wear headphones for? I know there's a lot of frequencies that they recommend, you know, put on headphones for this. They do recommend headphones. Okay. I mean, I just say, just listen to it however yeah. you can. So that's the first report. The second report is called vitals. Okay. And it honestly gives you as much information as um, like a whole blood test, hair tissue, mineral analysis, um, your fecal test, a urinalysis, and even some genetic it has in there as well. And this is all from the headset that sits the right here. Yep. And How simpler food. can it get than this? I mean, we all, I'm doing this. We're doing this because I want to know my stuff. <laughs> Some people don't want to know. Some people are like, oh, that's too much. I want to know because I can't clear things I don't know. Like I look at yes. the things that I'm stuck with in my life. And to me, it's frustrating not knowing. And it's even more frustrating. Like, okay, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say this affirmation. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then it's like, damn it, same spot I'm in. So it's frustrating. (laughs) I'm like, okay, like, what do I have to do? An exorcism on myself? Come on. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
she we can do that too. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's a topic for another day. <laughs> um, you know, it's it. I think it's great having information. To me, that's I do too. Empowering. It is. It, it's like my, I say this all the time. The truth will set you free, and it, there is no more powerful thing than that. You yes. you wanna you wanna kind of know what's going on. You're not free, but when you know the truth, you're empowered and it will set you free. I, I believe right. that wholeheartedly. Absolutely. So then there's a third report. Oh, there's more. And that keeps getting yeah, better. There's two more. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> the third one is the comprehensive. And this is like a digital MRI. Okay. It's looking at the structure of your body. And it will choose based on um, the things that came up in the first two reports. It'll choose what it wants to scan. Otherwise, okay. it would scan every um, artery, vein, muscle, organ, chromosome, bone, all, uh, all of that. It would scan all of that and nerves in your whole body, which would take a while and it would be a little bit stressful on the body. So it chooses. Unless yeah, you tell and it me, sounds like, like some of it would be unnecessary. Yes, exactly. So it chooses what it wants to scan. Unless you say, "Look, I need to know what's going on with my spine or my shoulder or whatever," and then it, um, we just click on the things that didn't clear, didn't correct, mm -hmm. and it gives you a three D picture that you can rotate and see exactly where it is in the body. Okay. It's so cool. And then lastly is a very quick scan. It takes 10 seconds and this is, it, it's called quick scan. It, it will look through literally the hundreds and hundreds of supplements that I have scanned into my device. Mm -hmm. Some of them are homeopathic, some are herbs, some are therapies, even the patches okay. and, the beamer and other therapies, sauna. I mean, you can ionic foot bath. I do that in the office. Um, and your body will choose the top six things it needs at that moment. Oh. Yeah. And sometimes it's coming up to clear vaccines you had as a child. Oh, wow. It's like, well, Just we needed to get that layer off lingering. before we can. Yeah. So it's almost so like then, a priority layer. Like this is the yes. priority thing. And then this, 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 and this. <clears throat> yeah. And to me, it's fascinating to see um, like what comes up on that because I can take the history. I can do the other scans. I can, you know, you can tell me all your symptoms and I can pick and choose and say, well, let's work on this. We're going to yeah. get to the root cause with that. But then sometimes it's like, where did that come from? Hmm. And the body's choosing what it needs yeah. first. And it's really simple because then I can make you a custom homeopathic from those results. If more than yes. if two or more homeopathics come up on that scan, I make you a bottle that's your custom blend and, and nice. send it to you or give it to you here. Yeah. And that is truly individualized therapy. And you can do that whether they're in your office, outside of the glasses, um, or over the phone or Zoom or whatever, however you do it. It sounds like you were over the phone or the phone is just I do the scan. Up. I do the scan over the phone. And then I... Um, I set up a Zoom and pull the reports up and explain okay, them. Okay, so they can see the everything. Zoom. Well, that's amazing. Yes. I think I need we to get this through. done. And I think everybody else needs to get this done because if we truly <laughs> want to be healthy and heal ourselves from the inside out, then we need to know what's going on where we can't see. All right, so we will definitely be putting all of that information in there and give us your website real quick. It's graceful, F U L L wellness.com. Perfect. And easily, though, it, um, heal.me slash grace. Okay. Is where you can go, you can, people can book a 15 minute complimentary call, discovery call with me. Okay. And then um, if you want to do one of those sessions, it takes, it's 90 minutes to do all of that. And then um, you can set that up there too. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. I, I think people would really be interested in doing something different like that, especially for people. If you've had something that's been going on a while and you've maybe been to a few doctors and you can't figure it out, you know, mm -hmm. what have you got to lose? You, you have nothing yep. to lose only to gain. 
Yep. Right. Well, I, I'm here to facilitate and educate and show you how to make the changes in your body and how to enable your body to heal itself. That's what it's all about. I agree. I love that. And on that, go to Amanda's website, book a session with her because I know you're going to love it. I know I am going to do this. And Amanda, thank you so much for your time. I thank really you, Michelle. appreciate Enjoyed you coming it. on. <laughs> so we'll have All everything right, in the it. description and you can find everything there. And until next time, make sure to bring out the wealth within you, just like we will here. All right. Thanks, Michelle.